Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be continuing our discussion of R136, the region of space that has one of the most massive stars we've discovered so far, about which we've talked about in a previous video. In this video we're going to try to recreate it using Universe Sandbox, and visualize of what's actually happening in this particular part of space. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this right here is not R136, obviously, this is just a randomly generated uh, system of stars orbiting around one another. But they are very close to each other, which is actually what we're going to be creating here as well. So uh, imagine you are somewhere far, far away, specifically about 150 to 170,000 light years away from us in, this, in the uh, nearby galaxy known as Large Magellanic Cloud. We're going to initiate a supernova here because we are going to be going inside a nebula, and nebulas kind of usually look like uh, supernovas. Here is our supernova, this is going to be our nebula. We'll let it expand a little bit, and we're going to be creating a system of stars inside of it. So, this system is created by what seems to be an extremely large amount of hydrogen that ended up being collected in the region of space about uh, 10 to 15 light years across. So it's about five parsec across. But inside of that region, there is something like 450,000 solar masses of hydrogen, which is basically 400,000 times the mass of Sun. A tremendously large amount of material. This region is technically known as a starburst region because this is where many stars will pop out into existence, like we're actually going to create one right now, and will then start growing larger and larger and larger. And one such star is known as R136A1. This star has a total mass of approximately 315 masses of Sun as of 2017. We might recalculate this later on, but for now it's about 315. And this is the most massive star we've discovered in the universe so far. It's uh, not very far from us, extremely massive, but what's even more interesting is that it's surrounded by other massive stars, and we're going to add these um, in orbit around this particular star. So there is another star nearby known as R136A2 that is slightly less massive, but still way, way more massive than our sun. This one here has a mass of about 195 masses of sun. And there's actually at least eight more that we know of very, very well. There's um, something like close to 70 objects that were discovered in this region, many of them extremely, extremely big. We're going to actually maybe accelerate time just a little bit because I want the supernova to not be so bright. I want it to look more like a nebula rather than a supernova. So here we go, it's getting better and better now. And uh, we're going to place all of the other stars just so you can kind of see how close they are to each other. So this is only about a few hundred astronomical units away. And at a, at a distance of maybe less than one light year away, there's another one called R136A3 and R136A4 and so on up to uh, eight. There's at least eight we've discovered that we are certain are in this region. And here are the 10 major ones uh, from the R136 system, also known as RMC136. This uh, particular region of space, if you were to actually zoom out of it, would create this very, very bright uh, star-like object in the middle, which is actually, uh, it consists of many, many stars together, but it's ridiculously bright. It's many, many millions of times brighter than our sun. And each of these stars by itself is actually many, many times brighter and more massive than our sun as well. As a matter of fact, each of them is several hundred times more massive, with the lightest one being like 69 masses of sun, I believe, and the heaviest being, or the most massive being 315. So altogether, this is several thousand masses of sun already. And this is just the ones we've discovered and we are certain about. If we were to place our sun here, just, just for a comparison, this is what it would look like. So here are the stars from R136, and if we were to zoom in right around here, there is our sun. 
insignificant in comparison. Now, what's really interesting about R136 uh, stars is that this is very likely how many of the um, stellar objects were actually born in the beginning. So, so when the galaxy is still kind of early in its development and when it still doesn't have many stars but has a lot of a lot of gas um, orbiting around uh, various uh, parts of space, a lot of this gas starts accumulating into chunks of space, like in this particular system, and then starts to almost instantly create these super massive stars. And they are actually born really quickly within only a few thousand years. They last for a few million years, um, maybe even less than three million years, because this particular system is only about two million years old and it's already getting really unstable. And then all of them will actually go supernova, create uh, black holes, and create a lot of new material, like a lot of carbon, a lot of oxygen, a lot of metals, and many of these components will then create solar systems possibly similar to ours. So this starburst region is where many stars are born uh, from uh, basically tremendously powerful supernova that will result um, from the explosion of these very, very massive stars. Now, it's kind of hard to see them here, so I'm going to remove supernova in a few seconds, but before that, let's actually just briefly talk about the uh, Tarantula Nebula. So Tarantula Nebula is actually the brightest nebula we know of, and it's created by these tremendously powerful stars in the middle. So their radiation actually makes the gas in the surrounding area uh, illuminate with these beautiful colors that then result in what we know as um, Tarantula Nebula. And if it wasn't for these stars, there would be nothing. They would actually be absolutely dim and boring. So because of our 136 region, we actually have this tremendously beautiful region known as Tarantula. And let's actually remove the supernova so we can see the stars a little bit better. I'm going to delete it from here just so that it doesn't actually... And with most of the supernova now deleted, with just a bit of uh, particles left here, you can kind of see how bright, how tremendously bright this system actually is. So this is R136 from a distance of several light years away. So if I were to zoom in, you'll see that the stars are actually right here in the middle. And then if I were to zoom out, there's the sun. And this is R136. This is how tremendously bright it is. So eventually, they will obviously explode and create um, several supernova that will then create new stars. But until then, we'll actually get to observe uh, the brightest nebula in our skies and uh, potentially some of the brightest supernova will follow. But what uh, what's interesting is that starburst regions like this one will often result in what's known as a star cluster. So many of these stars, once they actually go supernova, which will create in a few seconds, I'm going to actually make the, all of them go supernova, um, will then result in a tremendously large and massive um, star cluster or globular cluster as they're known. And it will basically be uh, because of this. You're about to see the explosions. Many of these stars will probably go supernova around the same time and the amount of material released from the supernova will then create the globular cluster that will be chunked around the same sort of region of space where a lot of these black holes will be sort of left from, from these supernova. And so there is the creation of, uh, or the explosion of the, the so-called uh, starburst region and the creation of the global cluster that will then be created from all of this new material that was released. And so this is what's going to happen to R136 in the next few million years. And it's probably going to create some of the brightest supernova we've ever, ever known because um, in uh, Large Magellanic Cloud, there is so much material that can create large stars and uh, large supernova that, that even in 1987, we were actually able to detect the brighter supernova we've ever seen. So this also came from the uh, region of space in the Large Magellanic Cloud, relatively close to R136. So what's going to happen here is going to be even brighter, even more massive and more spectacular. So that's kind of what R136 looks like now. It's basically a bunch of hydrogen together that's creating these large stars that will then go supernova and create smaller stars, possibly similar to our sun. Until that happens though, we don't really know how and what is going to happen in this system. You can see that 
the supernova just disappeared and what's left behind is let's go check it out probably a bunch of really interesting looking black holes or maybe not maybe there is actually at least one star here that's left and so anyway so that's all i wanted to talk about in this video i wanted to kind of show you visually what r136 looks like and what's going to happen to it in the future Hopefully you learned something from this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. You're going to learn something else, something you may have not known before. Let's explore this last one and see what happens to it as well. Anyway, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And obviously, a black hole. About 15 masses of sun, I guess. Very, very beautiful.